Hey guys, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. I would appreciate it if you guys like and subscribe and turn notifications on if you guys like this content. I like to mix it up a little bit and show you guys graphs that you're not going to be seeing most anywhere else. Um, and today we're actually going to be talking about a, a different one. I have not covered this one before, but it's one of the ones that I use. It's essentially, it's the derivative with respect to time of the 50-week moving average times the inverse of price. Now this kind of, this might seem complicated, um, but it's actually really not. Um, the reason why we multiply by one over price is so that when we're looking at several different moving average derivatives, we can sort of normalize it by, by multiplying by the, the inverse of price. Now, the re what it does is it basically takes these derivatives and puts them on essentially the same scale. Um, if we don't do that, then derivative is going to be, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be skewed by whatever the price is currently for Bitcoin. Um, and because of that, we, we multiply by inverse price. Now, this might seem complicated, especially if you haven't had calculus before, um, but I assure you that, you know, if, as long as you can just, like, listen to me, to me um, explain what we're doing, then I think you'll, 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 you'll more or less get the point of, of the video. So here we're plotting this derivative with respect to time of the 50-week moving average. Now, the zero line is is important because when this um, when this curve is above zero, it means that the 50-week moving average is increasing monotonically. It's increasing. It's not decreasing at all. So even when you see this go down, the 50-week moving average is still technically increasing. It just might start increasing at a slower rate. So the slope is 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 is, is changing. Once it gets below zero, the 50-week moving average is, um, is, is decreasing. And you can see that you know, th throughout the entire history of Bitcoin, we've, we've spent way more time uh, in, in, in periods where the 50-week moving average is, is increasing. Now, one of the things that I think is very interesting is that once we, you know, each bull cycle, each market cycle, you know, leading up to that cycle, we have a bear market. And in that bear market, once we cross this threshold at zero, which is when there is a change in the slope, so we basically go from negative to positive, so the, the 50 week goes from decreasing to increasing, we don't look back until the next bear cycle. So here, once we cross this threshold, we stayed above it, the 50 week moving average continued to increase um, for the next, you know, two to three years before the next bear market. And once we had this bear market, you know, this, you know, we were increasing, we crossed zero, then the 50 week started decreasing for about a year. Um, and then once we crossed zero again, we were increasing for another two to three years. And then if you've, if you've been in the space for the, at least the last year, you'll note that the 50 week, you know, was decreasing for a while. And it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago, um, maybe halfway through 2019, where we started to see um, the slope change and we came above zero and we've been above zero ever since. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that once we cross zero in each of these cycles, we stay above it. So some of you might say, well, look at this. We, we clearly go above it here. Um, we, or, you know, if we zoom in here, we, we go above it. Um, but the point is, is once we, you know, once we really contact this threshold, we stay above it um, for a number of years, at least in the past. Um, so I think this is a, a very interesting metric that I personally use for my analysis, um, and maybe maybe some of you guys will use it now too. So again, this is a, a lagging indicator because the 50-week moving average is, is taking into account price data from the last um, 50 weeks. So 350 days. So it's important to to bear in mind that you know if this is if this is dropping right here, it doesn't mean that the price is dropping right then. It means that if you were to take the um, the last 350 days and then average it, at some point you see a sharp drop off. And the reason this drop off comes is because at a given point, you know we move past using the, the values from the previous mania phase in these calculations, and instead we're basically just in a bear market. And then that's when you see this, this sharp drop off. And you know, so we have it three times so far, you can see 50 week moving average is increasing, we drop off, we decrease for a very short period of time, we're above 
uh, back above this threshold, we stay increasing for a long period. The cycle repeats, the cycle repeats. So the point is, is if we continue our previous cycles, then we're not going to drop below this threshold anytime soon. Um, what this would indicate is that price might go down, you know, in the short term, but there's not going to be a sustained downtrend, um, which would cause this uh, to go below zero and cause the 50 week to start decreasing again. Obviously, this is not financial advice. There's no guarantees in this space, but this is just observations based on past um, historical prices. Now, to show you guys what I mean, let's plot the 50 week moving average on the same graph. So on the left hand side, we have the derivative with respect to time of the 50 week moving average times the inverse of price. And then on this axis, we have the price, but this is the 50 week moving average. So you can see here when the 50 week moving average starts decreasing, it corresponds to when we cross the zero point here. So that's where we start decreasing, and then here we go above zero, and you can see the 50 week is increasing. Again, we decrease, this is where it crosses. Here we start increasing, we cross again. In the last bear cycle, we crossed this threshold, we went down, we saw a similar dip like we've done in the past, um, and now we're, we're above zero, and the slope is, is increasing once again. Now, again, this does not mean we're going to continue to increase, but based on past observation, um, it might lead some people to, to believe that that would be the case. Let's look at a different moving average. Let's look at the 100 week. If you look at the 100 week, it tells a, a, a similar story. Um, we don't have this first drop down just because, you know, 100 weeks is 700 days. Um, and and it, it just, the, the 100 week moving average did not start decreasing until the bear market. Um, of 2014-2015. Of um, and here, what, you know, the interesting thing is you can see that we drop down, we kind of have this drop, kind of come back up, and then we see a sharp decline before immediately recovering and getting back above zero. And when I say immediate, I mean this is over the course of around a year. Um, and we, you know, we get back above zero, our, the slope continues to, to increase, then we level off, the slope decreases, um, or at least it's the slope isn't negative, but it's decreasing from its previous value. And then at some point, it turns negative and starts going back down. So currently, the 100-week moving average is decreasing. Um, but there's likely going to be a, a sign change soon. And you can see that, that when it happens, you know, it, it'll happen very quickly. Um, it doesn't take that long. And, and, and remember, this is a lagging indicator. It is not exactly indicative of, of, of the current price. So if we plot the 100-week the moving average over top, you know, you can see that it, it increases throughout this entire time, and it's increasing at a pretty, you know, fast rate here. Once this starts decreasing, the, the slope decreases, even though it's still monotonically increasing. Okay, we cross zero, it decreases for a very short period of time. Again, here we are increasing for a, a long period of time, um, and you can see the slope change here. And the, the, um, the slope in the 100 week moving average became negative not that long ago. And the reason is because you know, it's taking into account a lot of data. Um, and what, we're, what we might see is we might see a dip like this, which is going to be, basically it's going to be taking into account all of those lower prices um, that we saw that downtrend that we saw in 2018, it's going to really start taking those into account. Um, and, you know, slowly but surely, the, the mania phase from the previous time is, is, is going to start um, not being weighted at all because it's not going to be in the last 700 days. Um, so, you know, we're almost two years out from that point. So already it's starting to not, um, st starting to not matter. So if you were to just go um, two years back, you can you can imagine that you know this is when we're we're start we're starting to not include um, uh, these prices anymore from from the previous bull run. So let us let's actually plot this on on top of price so you can see kind of how the indicators work. So here's the 50 week moving average um, times the inverse of price, and you can see that once it, it crosses zero, um, the second, so once it, it goes from negative to positive, that is right when this bull cycle started. Um, and then you can see um, over here, once we, um, 
uh, did the same thing, once we crossed zero, that is when this bull cycle started. Again, we've crossed zero again, and once we cross zero, we could speculate that, that might be when this bull cycle is starting, okay? So, you know, it's interesting, um, it's interesting that, I think it's an interesting way to look at, um, to look at these metrics, um, because, uh, you know, it can tell you longer term momentum shifts that you're not going to get being around, being around the markets day to day. Um, and, and if, if the past, and, and, and I should note that this axis, the, this curve here, the price is plotted over here. Um, so use this scale, logarithmic scale for the price and use this scale for the, this derivative. So, you know, again, we've crossed zero. Previous times we crossed zero, that was when the bull market started, okay? Doesn't mean we're not going to drop down, you know, doesn't mean Bitcoin can't drop down uh, a bit more. I mean, it, you know, it could easily, you know, the prices could still decrease, but um, at least the 50-week moving average would still be increasing um, for the entirety of the next bull run, assuming the past market conditions are, 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 are sustained. If we plot the same curve, uh, but for the 100 week, so now we have the 50 week and the 100 week, you can see that the, the 100 week, once it um, crosses zero here, that is exactly when this parabolic run up occurred. Um, and you know, once it, once it fell below zero, actually, is when we have this initial peak in, in the price from, from 2015, where it went up like, you know, one to 200% in a very short amount of time. Um, so you can see currently we are dropping. Now, does this mean that similar thing is going to happen? Are we going to see a, a run up in the price like we did previously, which is then going to culminate in this um, coming to a point and then sharply increasing, which will then lead to a, a sign change. And then the 100 week moving average will then start increasing again, potentially for the entirety of the next bull market. Um, so, you know, I know if, you, if you're not familiar with calculus, um, this stuff might be a little convoluted. Um, I assure you, if you just, you know, take a little bit of time to, to try to understand what's going on, I, I think you can, you, can, you can really take, away, take a lot away from this. If you guys like this content and you want to see more of it, please like and subscribe and turn your notifications on. Um, and uh, we, will, we will continue to look at these types of charts in, in the future. So, again, this whole video is, is based on the derivative of the moving average um, with respect to time times the inverse of price. We looked at the 50 week, we looked at the 100 week, and we looked to see how once the slopes change um, and they really get above this zero threshold and they become positive, there has historically been no looking back in, in the bull market. Um, and, and the 50 week, we've already crossed it. Um, we've already crossed it to the upside, so it's already positive. The 100 week is currently decreasing but you know, it, once once we see that turnaround, um, and, and actually once we just see this this culminate in this um, uh, valley, which might you know might occur somewhere over here, which is on this axis, um, maybe that'll correspond to a similar type move with Bitcoin in in this market cycle. Um, and uh, just you know, take that what you want. I hope you guys like the content, and until next time, bye.